In this episode, we build a tiny whoop, lose all track of time, and build a custom TX module. We're building a tiny whoop. If you know what that means, you either have one, want one, or you have no clue whatsoever. But really, there was a FPV team based in Colorado that goes by the name of Big Whoop that came up with this idea a while back. They basically took an Inductrix micro drone, tiny little guy, a little bit bigger than this. They took some micro cam, put it on there, beefed up the batteries and motors, and made it an FPV racer. So you will need some goggles to go along with it so that you can see what the racer sees. But it's real quick and easy upgrade, and we thought we'd take a couple minutes to build it out. So come with me to the workbench and we'll upgrade this thing and get it going in no time. The first thing we have to do is pop off the cover to expose the flight controller. You can see the board from the bottom, but we'll just pop that off and that will allow us to solder the camera later on. We also want to upgrade the motors. Fortunately, the motors that you can get through tinywhoop.com already have the connectors, the micro connectors, so that we'll just plug them right in. So it'll be a piece of cake to upgrade these motors. We'll use a couple tools to pull off the props, slide the motors out, and reconnect them. It's important to note the orientation, uh, two are counterclockwise and two are clockwise. And those are denoted by the color of the wires on the motors, the black and white wires are counterclockwise and the red and blue wires are clockwise motors. So we have to make sure that we get those in the right place. Other than that, we just plug them in uh, and then we're good to go. So we'll do that first and then we'll set up the camera. So that wasn't too bad. Just had to um, be careful about the wires, try to route them up under the uh, framework to try to tuck them away so they don't get caught up in the fans. And then they use these little dental rubber bands to hold the wires up against the motor. So that part's done. Um, the motors have been upgraded. The fans are all good and working. And now we have the, to install the camera. We're gonna dehouse it, take some of the weight off of it, and then we're gonna attach it on top. At tinywhoop.com, you can get all these parts. They're relatively cheap. This is just a 3D printed little housing that will hold the camera at 10 degrees. Gives you a good perspective. Um, they also have all the batteries and they even throw in some stickers so let's go ahead and mount the camera and we'll solder up the power wires to the main board where the main battery connects to the flight controller um, that should be pretty straightforward and we should be good to go after that So that's it. Tinywhoop.com made it easy with all their parts. They had the motors in stock, um, and this is what it looks like in the end. We'll get some close-ups and show you, but their little camera mount gives you a nice 10 degrees tilt. We're ready to put a battery in and power it up and then uh, test it out. All right, so we're powered up. We've got the uh, camera lit up. We've got some uh, lights blinking because ready to pair with the controller, um, but we're good to go. You can see the display here is showing uh, the view from the drone. So we'll um, be whooping it around the house tonight. So this is probably the biggest mistake we could have done because we've been flying this thing around for about the past four days We made a few distinctions though And we've made a couple improvements on this thing You know when the battery dies you get about one and a half seconds to land or else it's gonna fall And so we notice it always lands on the antenna We've actually broke the antenna a couple times So one of the first thing I did is 3d print some roll bars <laughs> 
Now these are about 1.25 grams, so it doesn't add too much weight, but everything counts when it comes to the tiny whip. Also found this online, which is to improve the structure of the motor mounts, because we noticed that the motor mounts are just held up by three very thin one mil prongs within these air ducts. And if you hit it at an angle, it tends to break those. And we noticed that one of those already got broken. So we put this strut on there. That's another gram and a half. So we've added three grams of weight to this. So it's noticeable, surprisingly, when you're flying this thing around, the extra weight, you know, it's less responsive in uh, when you apply throttle to it. But, you know, it's been a lot of fun. We're having a blast with it. It's one of the worst things I could have ever done because now we're gonna build a second one um, so that we can race, right? So this was the ready to fly version and it came with its own controller. Partially the reason why I did that is because the Orange RX transmitter module for, for the uh, Tyrannus radios was impossible to find. It's back ordered, they've discontinued it, and so that wasn't gonna happen. So I got the ready to fly version, which has this controller. Uh, and this controller, unfortunately, doesn't have any way to program it. You can't adjust the expo or the um, weighting on any of these. You're pretty much stuck with whatever it is. And we noticed that the sensitivity on this isn't what you want it to be. And, and if we could use the Tyrannus, then we'd be able to tune it um, to suit our needs. The thing that brought that to light is because we made a few gates. So these are a couple gates that we can set out and race through around the house. And you have to kind of duck through these and that was a lot of fun. We 3D printed the base. We modeled this in Fusion 360. So it was all very straightforward. And this is just coat hanger. I'll show you a video of that. So we put these in there. We had some EL wire, but I really didn't want to waste the time on the EL wire until we I got the controller issue down. So I did some looking around. Getting the ORX transmitter module for with the DSM-2 protocol for the Tyrannus wasn't going to happen. But I was able to find a DIY ORX transmitter module. So it doesn't plug right into the Tyrannus, but it has the pins and the capabilities. So we created a 3D model. We 3D printed a module that would plug right in here. And then we uh, put the DIY component from the ORX transmitter module into this and the secondary antenna allows us to control the tiny whip. And we can tune the controls exactly how we want it and everything is really tight. So this is gonna make it a lot more fun and Carson and I will be racing these around the house once we get a couple more gates done and we get the second one built. Um, but for now, let me show you a close up of our modifications and then show you some of the footage of us flying around. you enjoyed this it was a lot of fun for us if you're not familiar with the tiny whip you need to explore it it's been around for several months it's really hitting peak popularity there's gonna be a lot of knockoffs this holiday season everybody's gonna want FPV micro drones underneath their tree so check it out now while you can and if you need more explanation on how this module came together where you can get those parts and 3d print the model and make that all happen feel free to comment below and I'll answer all those questions in the meantime stay safe and have fun